Hi everyone, Kate Bohr and Fiona Piman joining you for this week's Facebook Live where we're digging into uh, fact or fiction. And this is this story that many women talk to us about is I'm not ready yet. Um, we've got these beliefs, assumptions, expectations around what is required in order for us to be able to put our hat in the ring for a promotion opportunity, um, even to ask a question, negotiate a pay rise. I mean, our experience, we're waiting to feel 100% confident in order to be able to do those things. Uh, and in our experience, um, if you are ready, if you are 100% confident, in our experience, you're actually too late, right? You're six or 12 months too late to put your hat in the ring, to be asking that question, to be negotiating that pay rise. Yeah, I think this is a big one. And we often hear from leaders that they've got some great, talented, high potential women in their team, but they're not backing themselves. They're holding back. They're waiting for something in order to contribute. And it's kind of frustrating because the leader knows what they can do, but they're not showing up with that because they're waiting to feel this 100% confident first. And I think the other frustrating piece is that while you're waiting to have all these things, tick all these boxes before applying for the role or speaking up or, you know, taking a secondment or whatever it might be, other people, often with less experience, with less knowledge, sometimes with less talent, are just putting their hand up and asking anyway. And that can feel frustrating because you know what you can bring, but you're not backing yourself yet. Yeah, and often we hear women say they feel overlooked, um, but they haven't put their hat in the ring in the first place. Um, I think what's often happening is we recognise an opportunity. Oh, wow, I'd really love that role. It aligns maybe with um, my career plan or uh, the sort of experience that I'd like to get. So we recognise that opportunity and then fear kicks in. Um, often, do I, do I really want it um, is one side of uh, the doubts that can kick in. Um, am I ready? Like if I take the role, uh what if I get it and I screw it up, then what? What does that mean for me? So often a lot of these fears um, presence and amplify ourselves. And I think what we're really doing here is we're looking for a lot of certainty. Sometimes they're just excuses. And I think it's really important um, that we caveat that a little bit. Um, of course, what's really important is we dig into what is going on. Um, that self-doubt, that fear is not a signal to stop. It's not a signal to go and do another course, which is what many of us do. Go and get more qualifications. I'll have more confidence. I'll have more certainty. Um, I'll get another six or 12 months experience. Um, then I'll have the confidence. Then I'll have the certainty. What we know is even when clients have done that, um, they are still back at the same place, uh, not having the confidence they'd like because they haven't taken care of the fear. Yeah. And this piece we can do all the external things we like. We can get, you know, the extra qualification, all, all the bits and pieces, and that will look good on paper, but it won't resource us internally. And I think this is the piece that we see time and time playing out for women is we haven't done the work to understand that fear that's going on. We haven't unpacked it. We haven't acknowledge what it means and we haven't done the work to reframe it and to think about things differently uh, we talk a lot about this in the acts of confidence program you know um, module five is really all about redefining your relationship with fear and failure and digging in knowing that it's okay to give something a go even when I'm not 100% certain already because I'm going to learn a lot in the process and that's worth more than this holding back thinking I'm not ready uh, maybe um, playing small and safe because the risk in that is that you do get overlooked, you do miss out. Um, and while you're stalling, you aren't gaining more experience, you aren't gaining more knowledge that could be really valuable. Yeah, I often use the example, um, two people uh, at the same level, uh, one has the courage to apply for a role that maybe is a stretch, they get it. In 12 months' time, there is a competence gap, right? That person has 12 months more experience uh, doing different things than you, uh, building different relationships with you. So there is a very real difference then um, in your skill, capability, experience. Um, I think often when we're talking with clients um, who are looking at, at new roles, we say for every role you think you can do, apply for one that you don't think you can do. Um, here we say that for two reasons. One, um, to help them detach 
from, uh, you know, kind of the belief that everything I apply for, I need to get an interview. But secondly, um, they start getting interviews for roles that they didn't think they can do. I think this piece um, that is very common for many of us, um, even when we're looking at promotion opportunities, albeit you have more certainty or more visibility around what good looks like um, because you're in that organisation, you probably know the role, but we often overestimate what's required to do a good job um, and underestimate our skill capability experience. So the opportunity when it comes particularly um, to uh, sort of identifying, um, you know, what, what is required in order to be successful is to actually have good conversations. I mean, our experience, what happens then, we right size um, the expectations of the role. Uh, if we then do the work to act of confidence number two, articulate and share our value, really be able to understand our own skill capability experience. What we find is we are as ready as we need to be to take on and apply for that role. Um, so this piece around being able to right size the expectations um, I was on a panel last week, we were talking about imposter syndrome um, and a comment I made that I really want, think is worth sharing here is often imposter syndrome is us overstating the expectations of what we're assuming is expected right? in, in that conversation, um, what's expected uh, in terms of delivering in that role, our ability to have good conversations, to get clear on what a good job or what success does look like allows us then to calibrate our skill capability experience and and have a good conversation about whether we really are ready or not. Yeah, I think this is a great place, you know, if you're listening to this um, or you know a woman who you feel um, is in this kind of circle of waiting to be ready, it's a great opportunity to share this video. Let them um, see and maybe appreciate what's going on if they're telling you they need to do another course or if you're telling yourself you need to do another course. Um, just notice what's sitting below the surface. Start to dig in, start to look at that. Um, if you found this useful and valuable, please take friends, colleagues, anyone um, who you feel would benefit. And if you've liked this, make sure that you um, subscribe to the Facebook page so you can see more of these videos. If you'd like to go deeper with your relationship with Core Confidence, go to our website, coreconfidence.com.au.